Hello again, everyone. Uh, Cal's here. Let's, uh, let's go this way. Alright, there's a load of moving things here. We've got a Kobo thing. Not bad for an abandoned facility. again, Cal. I, I told you that you frightened me when you do that. Uh, interact? I guess the lift doesn't work from here. Okay, we've got this panel here at least. Proceed to the observation deck to initiate alignment. Huh. You gotta hand it to Cree. She thought of everything. You think, though? Sorry, there's the Mantis. You think in the sense about how we've just had that encounter with the Empire. You think, where where did they go? I mean, are they up here? What am I doing? Oh, activate. See, you made it. Grease informed me you're in need of assistance, so here I am. <laughs> it's a long trip. Couldn't have been easy. I might be 200 years old, but I'm as spry as a Padawan. Amazing. Oh, Cal, this is simply amazing. Can you start the arrays when we're in position? Oh, I stand ready for your order. It would be my honor to see Master Kree's dream alive once more. We're your master. Alright, into the abyss. Destination unlocked. Tanalor. Well, all I can say is, I wasn't expecting that. I honestly thought there was going to be more when I made that uh, stop at the end of the last episode, but it looks like we could be going straight to Tanalor. Go through the abyss. I don't know what I was expecting, but. It's the only way we're getting to Tantalor. I think, actually, to be honest, right, I think what I was expecting is we'd climb up the entire thing. You know, we've been through that many long levels within levels. Like, I was expecting some tower climb. When, in fact, it was just basically take the lift up. <laughs> A relief in some ways. It justifies having that big uh, area just now. All right. Ooh. Oh, okay, I remember. This is uh, where we've just been into. And there's the droid we uh, controlled. <laughs> Alright, back through here then. Let's get a save in and uh, let's get to Tanalor. Man, oh man. I mean, I hope Tanalor's interesting, let's say that. We've seen snippets of it via memories from uh, Santi Santari and uh, Dagon, but I hope that it's interesting because the main crux of it is that it's a planet that no one knows about, so the fact that it's elusive is interesting in its own right. So I can only assume that the Empire will find it. That, that would be the assumption I would be making just for the simple fact that if if it was still there, why didn't the Empire take advantage of it in the... Or why didn't the Rebels take advantage of it in the, uh, the real timeline, if you like, or the normal timeline? Uh, let's try and avoid combat. There we go. <laughs> okay. So let's get on here. Um... Yeah, I go back to it. I'm curious. I mean, we, I know we're going to see Bode there, but I feel like Bode's just one part of this. You know, he's the main crux of the the revenge mission as we're on at the moment. But uh, yeah, I'm curious if there's anything else worth 
going there for. You think about Uncharted, for instance, you know, you've always got the MacGuffin at the end of the game, but usually there's a reason why you don't want to get the MacGuffin. So I can't help but think, is there going to be something like that here? All right. Off to Tanalul. Let's get out there. Uh, is it here? Nope. Over here. No chit chat, you too. Okay. I'm ex I mean, I'm, I'm assuming Bo would be the final boss. Or unless they do another dupe one where it's like Vader again. But uh, I'd be surprised at that. But yeah, um, you look and you think, Bode, I would expect to be difficult. I mean, I've said it already, I find the lightsaber and the blaster quite a good combo. So, the fact that Bode no sort of for a bumpy ride. starts that, you know, I can imagine it being, uh, and being difficult. Let's see what this is about anyway. Cal, is it time? We're heading to the abyss now. Fire up the arrays. I'll be monitoring your progress from here. May the force be with you all. And juicy. I think this is why it upsets me a little bit with Cal and tampering with the dark side. It's like, I, I, I know you could argue the character development is there. You don't want him to just be purely a beacon of light. But to his allies, he is. That's how I see it. Well, what do you think is taking Z so long? Dagengera was the only person to live through what we're about to do. At least we will die together. <laughs> hey, great pep talk, kid. Hopefully they can fit that on my tombstone. <laughs> Look. seems to nail the droids. Maybe the odd exception, but yeah. Trippy. It's beautiful. Oh yeah. I'll bet that's what all the other poor saps said right before they were torn into vortex chow. Reminds me of Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. At least with a colour palette. Great. Now it's an obstacle course. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm trying to be objective, but wouldn't Cal perhaps have been better piloting as far as he's got the force? Coming too fast. But you are faster. Stop piloting and start flying. I'm rerouting power from deflectors to the engines. What are you crazy? You're trading safety for speed. Exactly. We're all in on you, buddy. It's my ship, ain't it? Greasy does it, baby! I mean, I can't say that is the most sensible approach. You'd have thought maybe they could have tried to pilot it rather than fly it, but... <laughs> Whatever. Hey, wait a minute. Is it me, or is this tunnel getting a tad cozy? It's not just you. Z, what's going on? The arrays are overloading. There's nothing I can do. Okay. We need to go faster. I'm going as fast as I can. Wait, wait a minute. Are you crazy? If you jump into hyperspace blind, they'll be picking up pieces of the man it's all over the outer rim. Do you trust me? You know I do, Cal. Let her ride. Now. I didn't look at the subtitles then, but was that see it? If that's the case, that was cool.
<laughs> All right, that was the double laughter. You've got him bloody still squealing. You've got them two going for a smooch after. <laughs> well, at least none of us lost our cool. <laughs> Uh, that was funny. Wow. I hope it's worth it. He's open as well, Grease. Spent an entire game trying to get here. Well, you would assume that there's a way back. I always remember about um, the ghost in Star Wars Rebels. It's that, there was that episode where they were trying to get to Zeb's new homeworld, and it was like once they got there Hera said oh once we've been we'll always be able to find a way back so I think hopefully that's what the case would be here you know that once you've made your way here once you can find your way back easier there's a new ear all no I think it was just pointing me here okay let's get off off the ship and let's see what's going on town of law uh Let's have a save. Haven's Edge. Enemies have respawned, but what enemies? Um, okay, so let's have a look at the map. Well, I'm assuming our objective is find Bode. Confront Bode, yeah. Well, let's get to it. No point hanging around. And so then Perry just there. Oh, are you with me, Marion? Cool. Hey, we got buddy. So this is Tanalor. Not what you were expecting? I don't know what I was expecting. So much has changed since I first heard its name. I'm glad we're not on our own for this mission. The temple's this way. Dagon and Centauri Cree planned their future here. And look where it got them. Good retort from Marin. Yeah, it's, it's, the world looks nice. I, I, I wouldn't mind, but we've seen it already, so I'm like, don't give us the scenic view too long. <laughs> Jedi Temple? Perhaps? Don't get me wrong, it looks pretty. Let's go this way. Bode will not let this end peacefully. He has already used fatherhood to justify betrayal and murder. Now we have him cornered. With nowhere else to run, he will kill or be killed. It's his daughter I feel for in that scenario. Well, say something! You're right. But what about Kata? She's not much younger than we were when our families were taken from us. I know. You and I will carry that loss for the rest of our lives. But Kata still has a chance. Yes, she does. Very well. We will give Bo the choice to stand down. For Kata's sake. And ours. Alright, here we go. <laughs> it's a very tight crawl space. I keep thinking about something Seer once said. A warning. Every Jedi faces the dark side. I feel so much hatred towards Bode. Seer won her battle with the dark side. You will too. He is losing right now, though. I mean... Def it's definitely safe to say Bode has lost his fight with it. Fall back to the temple! The Nile are enveloping our position! Master Gera, that is an order! If I recall correctly, just the bits of lore that uh, I remember, didn't they say that uh, the Nihila um, Ravis's race? Or am I mixing races up? I might be doing that. Sorry, I just want to look over here and make sure I'm not missing anything. I don't think I am. Yeah. <laughs> and say, so, uh, Merrin stayed all the way over there as I say, Where are you going, Cal? It's over here. Um, but yeah. I can't remember if it is Ravis's race or not, but. Um, it would explain why Gara was uh, not too concerned during the attack on the temple. It's like, I ordered it. That's if I remember right, anyway. Oh, um, what are you scanning, Biddy? Ceremonial fountain. Okay. 
I mean, it's not surprising that there's no enemies here. I mean, unless the Nihil were here, then I don't know what Do there could be. Do you hear that? Gotcha. And it could go on for a little bit longer, but very nice sinking voice that. Hello, Kata. Eighty-one. Hey, Kata. This is Marin. She's a friend. I'm sorry, Papa hurt you. Yeah. He said I'd never see you again. Doing here, Kata. Your father stole something very important. We're gonna ask him to give it back. Will you show us the way? <sighs> okay. Follow me. I don't like it here. Dark and lonely. You don't have to be afraid. Better? Just in use of dark magic. Very pretty. What are you up to here? I mean, if you plan to just chill here for the rest of time, it's a bit of a lame plan, if I'm being honest. Kata! How did you get here? It wasn't easy. You shouldn't have followed us. Papa, don't! Stay back, Kata. This is the only way to keep you safe. She will be safe. I promise, Bode. But listen to me. It's over. Lay down your weapons. This planet will be a haven for those hunted by the Empire. Including Kata. And you. But you have to surrender. Now. Go outside, Kata. Listen to them, please! <laughs> me in this fight, I'll be honest. Looks 
tell you what, if you hit Marin, Cal is going to kill you without a second thought. It's over, <laughs> okay, that's trippy. Doing that, okay. Andy's motives a little bit confusing as far as even when we were on Jeddah and you know you sort of getting this impression that he's going to betray us you're thinking why can't we share the planet I mean I know the argument might be you bring em enemies of the Empire here they will be hunted to here but I'm thinking look at the bloody effort it takes to get here surely it'll take them a long time to hunt us here <laughs> you, you know I just find it very not lame but I don't know. Our decision is final. Master Ancesis, please. He has the will to fight. And I admire it. But it is not only his life we would risk. The ships are leaving. There is no time. I suggest you both join us. Okay. When it's double teaming, that's how it should be. He's owning me a bit down the floor again. This fight is a bit tricky just as far as working out what to do with Bode. get away from that. Alright, that's quarter of health gone. Ah! I'm a bit disappointed that Marin disappeared during this fight. <laughs> oh, I thought, I thought it got away. 
All right, I don't know how long it's been like that, but me shiny forehead was, uh, well, it was sort of affecting the green screen a little bit. So, um, yeah. We're going with the Star Wars cap in lieu of my uh, preferred flat cap. I honestly don't know where I've put it. It's somewhere in the house, and I've just got no idea. I miss my flat cap. I'll get your feet stem. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh. oh mind, I dodged as soon as I land uh, as soon as I got on my feet because I thought he was going to attack me. But <laughs> it kind of fed into what he wanted. Okay. Alright, I'm going to apologise now if there's just a little bit of background humming. Uh, hopefully I can edit it out, but uh, yeah, I've had to turn my fan on. It's got hot over here all of a sudden. I think that's his way of saying don't use your blaster because I'm just going to deflect it all back at you. me he got me very easily there. I'm wondering if I need a different stance I have not used cross guard in some time at this point but I'm thinking maybe it's the way maybe I just get this feeling that the the blaster stance feeds into what uh, Bode wants. Learn to fight. impressing me as far as uh, defense yeah for a defensive blade it feels very very awkward once I've played the game I might look at well I, I might I will watch other people's playthroughs of it and it might give me an idea of the best way to use the cross guard stance but I'm just not convinced that it's right for me we'll go for double blade I don't think double blades great in this situation because it's more for blaster but I'm thinking maybe it's just slightly better in terms of he has got a blaster. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm guessing a fair bit here. Oh come on! The health situation's a bit concerning. Oh no 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 no! Don't do that. Okay, we lose a quarter of our health. Down to half. Oh, I should charge him when he's got red. Moves. Ah! Got a trick for you. Ah! 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 
block meter down. Oh, that was right close. Okay, we're going. Why Marin's not in this part of the fire. <laughs> oh, you little git. Okay, embrace the darkness, apparently. Guys, blaster now. You're not walking out of here alive. I've only got one stim as well, so Hello? I'm aware I'm gonna have to repeat a lot of things. Oh, okay. Half health, I'm okay with that. But, but I can't see what I'm doing. Help. Okay. Okay, that was a bit of an annoying one. Oh. Oh, we just stand still a minute, Bode. Thanks. Help me here. I don't even know where he came from in that last move. You were all oh, okay. Ah, I just couldn't dodge then. Oh, okay, that was bad. Mm, yeah, way too early. Way, way, way too early. Prehistoric early. Now, BD. This is my home now. Oh, come on, I thought I dodged him. He's making me angry with that. One mind, but it's like Vader. It's almost the same move as Vader, yet for whatever reason I'm not dodging it as effectively. Now, I got good at dodging it with Vader. Oh. Oh. 
soon as he's charged that shot, I was like, he's going to get me here. It's as if they, they know when you're on low health to finish you. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Alright, come on, lightsaber throw. I don't like that as a combo. Oh. I really don't like that as a combo. Toss me one BD. Come on, Whitland Dan, that's it. Oh, that was a bad one. Mm, ran right into it. Okay. I think that's unavoidable. I think he does that every time. Gonna have to be next time then. Hello again. So um, I, I, I look a little bit different behind me, and there's a reason for that. If I actually just hide all of this, um, you're probably going to be able to see that I'm there as well. And the simple reason is I recorded beating uh, Dag uh, not Dagon <laughs> Boat. I actually recorded it, and then. Yeah, my actual audio for it did not record. I was so frustrated when it happened. So what we're going to do, we're going to watch it together and we're going to talk through it together. So let's do that. So yeah, now for the record, this is my second attempt on the next day after that previous part. And yeah, I was, I had a good first attempt, but it wasn't like fantastic. I was a bit optimistic though. So yeah, um, what I will say about the battle in general, I feel like you do need to be reasonably aggressive, but you've got to time your blocks. And I don't know what it was during this uh, attempt, I felt like I nailed my blocks. My parry timing was spot on, almost. I think I might have lost a little bit of health during this first phase, but it was negligible. I mean, look at that, I even got a block in there on one of his dash attacks. Not to mention, uh, when you look at that as well, I, it got a bit of health there with the blaster, but just in general, I was getting in good timing, so I'm just really pleased how this played out. Distract him! I will strike from the shadows. I'd already got to phase two in the previous part, so the health was down there. There we go, we got blocking on the dash attack as well. I feel like that was another thing as well I was doing all right with. I was uh, timing my attacks well as far as I wasn't going in for gambles. You know, I wasn't going, ooh, you know, I'll, I'll try and get him here and then he goes red. So um, I just had a lot of luck in that regard. So he should go to the edge in a minute. Oh, that was a waste. I really hate that triangle ability. Here we go. So we got into phase two pretty quickly. Um, 
Yeah, so we do the flying thing. I feel like the first two phases in general aren't that bad. It's phase three that poses more of a challenge just for the fact that he's suddenly a lot more aggressive. So here we just make sure we block the lightsaber. Again, I'm trying to be a little bit aggressive, but I'm also wary that there he really tore down my block stamina fast, so we don't want to run out of that. We got lucky there, he went red. We, I think the fact that we got a hit in kind of forced this animation, so that was good. Again, good time with blocks. Just such good to block timing. Mean, I mean, again, this is uh, based on me and my uh, my history of not being great at blocking. So, um, yeah, really impressed with myself as much as anything. I mean, you can see I still haven't used the heal yet. I don't think that lasts for long, but we do manage to pull, get through pretty comfortably. Uh, he, yeah, he got me. I wasn't happy with that one. I, I don't know what it is exactly I have to do to... Uh, avoid that. I'm guessing it's dodged backwards or forwards or something, but yeah, I didn't nail it. Yeah, so like I say, we had to use the heal. He started getting a few hits on us, but I wasn't worried at this point. We're about halfway. This man sounds actually prefer commentating like this, because I'm, I'm watching myself, obviously, as well, and uh, I, I'm deep in concentration at this point. It's quite weird just watching myself just sort of, you know, full focus. Whereas here I can at least talk a little bit. Yeah, now that's what I was saying before. I was a little rash there. I went in for a, during a red attack. I should have uh, remained a bit more patient. Oh, okay, so both got us. Fair enough. That ability doesn't do any damage. Plus, if you race in, you can get some damage on him, which got us to phase three. Like I say, this is the one that worries me, just for the fact that he is very aggressive. Plus, he didn't trigger the cut, the, the automatic thing he usually does where he tries to uh, stab you with the blade. So, I think I just got in really fast on him. I mean, again, I go back to it. The key thing I found here was managing your health, which I do obviously at this exact moment, but also whittling down his block stamina. You could argue that's the whole thing with any boss, but I feel like Bode was very difficult to whittle down because unlike the previous ones, I haven't had my blaster. That felt like a good way in every boss battle. Yet with this, I tried my hardest to avoid it. I mean, I've heard some people say cross guard's good for this, and I may have to try using cross guard in New Game Plus or something, but it just didn't wow me. I'm assuming it's something that you need the upgrades for because it just didn't do the job for me. Hey, we got to. So, this is the bit where we got to a new cutscene. I was really happy at this point. I thought, come on, we're there, we're there. You're just wanting to finish him off at this point. Oh, I lost my lock on there. That was a bit scary. Um, but yeah. It's so close, even now I'm watching it back and I know I did it, but it's like, you're just thinking, look how close was it? Here we go. Come on, we got him. We got him. His block stamina's back up, but we just got to chip away. We just got to chip away. Don't play dangerous. Just play it safe. The lightsaber throw is wild proof clutch a lot. There we go. Don't put this on your daughter. Mode, we know what it's like to grow up alone. Please, listen to them, Papa! All right. And when the Empire comes, will you be able to protect my little girl? <laughs> I'm sorry, Kata. I tried. Ah! <laughs> 
I, I was taken aback at that first time. <laughs> it was pretty cold blooded, the cow. Both kind of, kind of deserved it, but um, it was still a bit cold blooded. I'll just say it now, by the way, if the audio's recording a bit funnily, I apologise. How are you feeling? Better. Thanks. Good. We should speak. I was not much older than you when I lost my family. For many years I carried this pain. I did not want to feel better. Why? I thought if I let go of the pain, I would be letting go of the people I loved. But I was wrong. And one day, I met someone who also lost his family. Together, we found another way to survive. This pain is yours. It is part of you. When my mother died, it changed Papa. And me too. I guess. Yes. But it does not have to define you. And you must not let it consume you. I am really curious why they go with those two. I mean, I'm, I'm curious about all of them, but... They've certainly set up another game very well. I did find it interesting that they brought uh, Seer and Cordova to Tanalul. I was like, okay, the corpse has been on the Mantis for the past couple of missions.
I mean, I, I did bring this up when I was reviewing the game at the end, but I have got to praise the music in the game right now because I think this is the first real instance I've heard of Star Wars theme. You saved my life on Brock. Just brilliant. You let me walk my own path when I needed to. You taught me what it truly means to be a Jedi. Now you're gone. We will continue your legacy, Seer. We will build something that can outlast the Empire. I promise you that. I promise. But I'm scared. I almost lost myself. I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm ready for what comes next. Cameron certainly, uh, it, I imagine actors do like to have a meaty scene if you like to chew on, and he took advantage there. And that was a brilliant transition. I, I, again, it's simple, but it was brilliant. Okay, so I am going to skip through the credits just for the fact that I, I did talk for pretty much all of them, and there is a fair chunk of credits, I must admit. Um, let's just go to the end cutscene. Well, not exactly what we expected, but this place is our home now. Yeah, Grease. Yeah, I guess it is. Still got a lot of work ahead of us. It will take time to contact the hidden path. And find the anchorites. And build a saloon. I mean, the place is creepy, but it does have franchise potential. This belongs with you. It belongs with all of us. What do you think, kid? Should we give it a shot? Yeah. Let's do it. Ah, oh, that's the spirit! Oh, that's great. Come on, I'll bet you're hungry. I'll make you something to eat. Did you ever have a scar stick? The music there is interesting as far as it sounds very ominous. Well, yeah, uh, journey complete at this point. So I'll pause it here just for the fact that there isn't really much. There was actually a little bit on the Mantis after, but I didn't record that, sadly. Um, but yeah, my final thoughts on the game, because like I said, I talked for about 20 odd minutes during the credits, but I, I feel like a lot of it was waffle, if I'm being honest. So general thoughts. I enjoyed the game. I, I've certainly enjoyed every session I've recorded. I don't feel like I've been coming in thinking oh god i've got to play that today it's been i've always been looking forward to the next part of the story to the next part of the game i, I did feel like i was heavily critical during 
yesterday's uh, non-recorded session, shall we say. Um, I, I, the only issues I had with the game, um, for instance, I've, even now I'm still confused, shall we call it, about Bode. I feel like his motives for going to Tanalor were debatable. Um, the idea being it's the only place that could keep her safe. I think while the Empire on Kobo, they saw the beam going into the into space, essentially signaling the direction of uh, Tanalor. Are we honestly saying it is, it is impossible that uh, it, they could be discovered here? I mean, I am not saying that it's likely to be imminent. I imagine the start of the next game will start with the hidden path, Cal, Marin, Kata on Tanalor. But you still look and you think, really? Are we expecting this to be the absolute safe haven you're expecting? Because to be honest, I mean, obviously I'm thinking from a game perspective as well, but of course it wouldn't be. You know, the chances are someone will eventually find Tanalor again. So to be so unwelcoming of the hidden path of Cal and everyone, I'm like, I'm not sure I buy that. I feel like if they were going to do that story, they really needed a B thing for uh, Bode, a, a, a second motive. It's why when we went to Nova Garon, I was expecting more support for the Empire from him. I was expecting it to not be that he's betraying them, but that he was leading them to Tanalor, or that Vader and the Imperials would find Tanalor because of Bode's actions. I was expecting some twist like that. But no, um, it, it kind of let Bode down in the end, because I, I really agreed with the twist. I think it made a lot of sense that uh, Bode would betray them. I think, even though I, I love Seer as a character, it made sense that her story ended at this point. Um... Uh, again, I found Enoch, Enoch Cordova's death a little bit weird because I honestly didn't know he was alive at the end of the first game. So to see him come back and then to kill him, it was like, mm, OK, that's sad. But we didn't even though we knew him from the first game, we didn't really get to know him. So it feels weird that they killed him off here. It's like, mm, OK, you know, guy we kind of knew dies, but fair enough. You can respect it. But yeah, Sears was definitely more impactful. Um I still argue, did he need to kill her? I mean, or Cordova for that. I'm sorry, Cordova for that matter, not see her. I mean, it was a very strange call from Bode. I mean, why not just stun him? I mean, I'm assuming the gun has a stun mode. If not, why not just throw him, throw him or something or, you know, in some way force them to leave him? You know, throw a bomb, one of his uh, trap mine bombs down or something. There were multiple ways of getting out of that situation, I'm sure, without killing Cordova. So... That was just an unnecessary move from Bode. I think if he'd have left them alive, Cal might not have even gone for him. But it was the it was the incentive that um, it stolen from him essentially. That well, it was the fact that it killed Cordova, not the fact that it stole from him, that made Cal give chase. So yeah, um, I have issues, like I say. Um, as far as Dak and Gary, I feel like he was all right. I actually enjoyed the I Republic aspects of the game. Um, I think the bait and switch works as far as having you think that Dagon's going to be the big boss and then switching to Bode at the end. I think that was very well played. I do have issues about Dagon as a character in general in the fact that there doesn't seem to be a lot of incentive for Cal to be chasing him, essentially. You know, I recognise it's the idea, oh, if Dagon gets control, he'll be a superpower of his own. And I'm like... Maybe, but it, it felt a little contrived. It's as if they needed a reason for you to go after him. So they kind of made him a guy who just kept, became completely consumed and wanted to rule the galaxy and thought himself above the emperor. You know, it's like, eh, OK, <laughs> it, it wasn't the most compelling reason, let's say that. But it, it, again, considering it was a bait and switch for Bode, I can accept it, but it didn't really wow me. When I was talking yesterday, my main thing was, if you compare the first game, you've got Second Sister as the main villain. Uh, I know Vader comes in at the end, but Second's mainly the antagonist for the game. You have Ninth come in as well. Um, granted, she returns in this game, but Ninth is a bit of a presence in the first game. Um, but there wasn't really any other human antagonist in that game. You, it was mainly animal bosses you were facing. And to be honest, I didn't mind that. You know, that was... Suited the first game for the most part. But 
Oh, hang on, it was Talon Malakos, I forgot about Talon. But yeah, I feel like the sec this game excelled in that regard, in the, in the sense that you faced people more often. You There were human stakes at life, in the sense of um, it wasn't just you were facing a beast, you were facing someone who um, could taunt back at you, who could read your moves. You know, it was definitely felt more... Um, if the combat and the boss fights felt more important. But I don't know, I, I can't help but feel that the actual bosses themselves... I feel like Ravus was really good. I feel like he got kind of done dirty a little bit. I think, even though I actually respected how he died, I feel like, as a character, I would like to have seen more of him. It would have been nice if he could have got out of that fight we had and he returned at a later point. Even if it was with da to, to, to side with Dagon, I think it would have been better for his character rather than being killed off. I mean, again, I actually respect the way we, he was killed off. I think the idea of a, a soldier wanting a soldier's death or a warrior's death, I think that was very fitting. I, I, even though, again, I didn't really disagree with Cal becoming like a, an executioner in that moment. I, I respect it. It's like, okay, you know, it works. But yeah, I really like Raver, so I would like to see more of him. Um, but I think that's where it kind of went wrong a little. Uh, it would have been good if they could have extended Ravus into the game later on. I mean, imagine if that had been a dual threat. You were juggling Ravus on Kobo and you still got to chase Bode. That might have been more interesting. But I, I, I digress a little bit there. Um, but yeah, it's not... Again, it's not that I didn't think what they did was good. It's just I feel like compared to the first game, it was a little... It wasn't as tight as plots go. It feels like the first game was so, while well, it was arguably safe, it was also, because it was safe, it was more uh, tight and structured. Whereas it feels like this this game Survivor, it was um, not as tight. It felt like they were, I wouldn't say making things up as they go along, but it wasn't as polished. I mean, I feel like that was shown in the cutscenes at times. You know, in the first game, it felt a lot of the time like you're playing the game and you move into a cutscene. It felt very, very smooth. Whereas with this one, I, I don't know why, but it feel it felt a bit more like um, there were moments where you you would go into a, an area where a cutscene would start, and it felt like the game had to sort of stop and go right. Let me just get Cal into position, or let me get these characters into position. You know, and it was very clunky. Not to mention there were odd visual bugs as well. I mean, I've mentioned one before where. Uh, Grease was in the background while you were also talking to him in the foreground. Just little things like that on the Mantis. I think the things that could be fixed with bug fixes or just re-rendering re a cutscene. But um, I'm assuming they do it via in-game animation. Like it's all animated live rather than uh, the actual do cutscenes. So maybe that's the issue. They've tried to go down that route of using the in-game character models rather than full, fully fleshed out cutscenes. And it kind of doesn't play as nice as it did in the first game. Um, that's just a little nitpick, I'm being honest, but it, it did draw me out a little bit. Um, I, I said it during that final scene, the music in this game has been incredible, in my opinion. I've loved it. The fact that so many... Uh, the, I can't really remember that many Star Wars music uh, or instance of Star Wars music. I think that at the end was the main instance I remember. So to have it feeling like Star Wars, but not having uh, themes that you remember, I've got to praise them for that. They've really done a good job there. The graphics at times were incredible. Uh, Kobo, when you're overlooking the Lucre Hulk, uh, when you're going towards Dagon at the end, at the final boss fight with him, that was incredible. Um, so yeah, there were so many good things graphically about the game. Um, I feel like Kobo was overused as a planet. I feel like it would have been good if they could have maybe made Kobo smaller and spread out the stuff on Kobo across multiple planets because Tanalor is a nothing planet at the end. You know, it's kind of just there. I assume it'll get expanded in another game, but for now it's just a waste of space, arguably. It was just an arena for the final boss fight, really. Um... Well, I, I get the feeling there are things you can do on the other planets. Jada, Coruscant, um, Nova Garon, the Shattered Moon. It feels like there's a lot less on those compared to Kobo. So I, I would have liked it if they spread it out, just to, if anything, take the daunting nature of Kobo away. Because I've said to myself, I'm going to play this game on stream, on, on my Twitch stream sometimes. But 
it's daunting because you think once you start Kobo, you're going down a bottomless pit. <laughs> and I can't say I look forward to that. It's uh, quite daunting. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that I want to say just before I finish. I, I enjoyed the relationship between Cal and Marin. I thought they did well there. It was certainly well expanded upon from the first game. Um, I have to chuckle at the fact that I... You could argue there are a couple now, and I think there's a benefit to leaving a time gap for the next game just to let that relationship expand further. I would be surprised if it um, remains as it is. So, again, we'll see there. Um, I feel like Cal and Sia was a little under, underdeveloped at times in this game. I know we had the flashbacks that showed Sia teaching Cal, but I would have liked more present-day stuff. It felt like... It would have been nice if she'd been on the Mantis, just for the fact that it would have then been more impactful when we lost her. Whereas, because she wasn't essentially a part of the crew, it felt like they were preparing us to be parted with her. And, um, yeah, I was... Um, that would be a little a minor nitpick. I, I, I don't know, maybe that was what they were going for. They wanted you to feel like you were going to lose her. But um, it's still... It still felt sad regardless, so they did the job whichever way you look at it. I think that's just me wanting more Sia. I liked her as a character. Um, I thought the call out to, see, to trailer when she died was good as well, just recognising the impact of the first game as well. Um, but yeah, other than that, I can't really think of much else that really stands out to me that I feel I need to talk about. Um, oh yeah, one more thing, the combat. I thought the combat was a lot uh, better in this game. Um... I feel like some of the stances were a little bit meaningless. I mean, single blade and used on Coruscant and I think that was it. I maybe tried it once in the Ravers boss fight again and that was it. Um, I feel like dual wield and the blaster stands for the best. You'd use double blade if you knew you were going to an area with a lot of enemies so they could uh, have crowd control. I get the feeling all of the stances get better when you've got the upgrades. So maybe that's where I let myself down. I didn't upgrade, say, cross, st cross guard stance enough to try it. But again, I think that might be a downside to it. The fact that you have to upgrade it to benefit. So, I mean, the dual wield, I didn't upgrade that till I think the final fight or close to it. And I got through just fine. So you look and you think something like that is very powerful from the beginning. Whereas something like cross guard you need to work on. And I can't say I'm a fan of that. I think if you're going to have that a blade needs uh, improvement, they all need to be like that. You can't have it that um, one's good without one needs improvement, in my opinion. I think it just means you're very heavily weighted towards improving one type of uh, stance. Um, but yeah, other than that, I feel like the combat was a lot better. I, I, I still found block timing a little bit funny in this game compared to the first game. Um, I got obviously I got better in that final fight, but in general I feel like the time was just a little bit out. I'm curious what it's like when I play Grandmaster difficulty because, yeah, I think that could change it. I think that was what that could have been a part that I was used to having very sharp uh, block times on Grandmaster in the first game. So maybe playing Jedi Master in this, it's um, oh sorry, Je Je yeah, Jedi Master instead of Grandmaster. I think that might be it, that I was just kind of used to having a bit more wiggle room for my blocks. So I was maybe just taking it for granted in this playthrough, whereas if I went for Grandmaster, I'd be a little bit more sharper naturally. So again, maybe that's me, but it could be the game. I don't know without replaying it. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. I don't think there's much more I need to say or I want to say. Um, but yeah, overall, I know I've nitpicked. I know I've put my criticisms out there, but... I go back to it. I did enjoy the game. I enjoyed every time I was playing it. And I, even though I'm probably going to take a little break from it just for the fact that I've been playing it almost non-stop for two months now, I am going to replay it at some point. I enjoyed the gameplay, enjoyed the story for the most part. So yeah, I'm curious where it goes. And if anything, I can miss Cal and BD. They're, they're such a good, good partnership. I want to see more of that. So uh, we'll probably do the side quest just to see how that goes. So if there's any more stuff with Survivor on the channel, it'll probably be a highlight for my Twitch stream, so do check me out on Twitch if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, until then, until the next uh, Let's Play, which, by the way, is going to be an older game, so stay tuned for that. Until then, bye for now, everyone.